what the atrial kick is? I will talk about that because that's going to be part of what we have to identify that might be missing when we're looking at an ECG. Like, where do you think the atrial kick could be lost? What's one of the most common rhythms out there where atrial kick is lost? AFib, because it's quivering. The atrial kick is the ability for the atrium to contract and provide another 15, give or take a percentage or two, of blood to the ventricles. Yes, by the way, it just so happens that I have some blood. It's not blood. Okay? This is the amount of volume on an average individual in one chamber. That's an awful lot. And the left ventricle. So you know what ejection fraction is? You've heard ejection fraction, okay? Well, that means a percentage of this, this is 140 mLs of, of uh, fluid that supposedly is in the left ventricle, all right? And that's under diastole. We call that, uh, uh, you know, resting stage, basically. Ejection fraction varies 50 to 70 percent, okay? Based on American Heart. And uh, last I knew, mine was 65. That was a couple years ago, all right? And that essentially is, uh, well, if I'm looking at that, it's about, you see this is 140? It's about that much. It's about how much gets pumped out per ejection. So that means this much remains in the chamber, okay? This is what we need to do for CPR. Okay, so you all have done ACLS, at least most of you have. BLS, I bet, right? Everybody's done that. When you're doing CPR, this is what we want per compression. Okay, and I just thought I'd throw that in there. Why? Because when we're looking at rhythms again, if something's not perfusing well, you've got to relate it back to, hey, what's going on? What, could this be affecting their ejection fraction? Absolutely. What is one of the biggest things besides uh, AFib that could severely affect ejection fraction? SVT. Very high number. Because it doesn't allow the chambers to get rid of it. It's definitely got it. And when we say it's beating so fast, there's still a large portion of volume there, but it's not got the big squeeze. So we lose that. So a, when we're talking about basically the uh, atrial kick, that's where we have an extra 15, give or take a percentage, dropped into the ventricles before the ventricles fire. That's known as an atrial kick. So essentially that means 85% of blood Essentially, once it gets into the atrium and the pressure is built up in the atrium, it forces the valves open and just pours into the ventricles. That's just passive blood flow. And then, of course, the AV node, the gatekeeper, is responsible for slowing down the conduction to allow a number of things, one of which is the, uh, uh, not allowing the electrical energy to get to the ventricles too soon, causing a reaction. It allows the ventricles to receive that passive blood flow Okay, and it also allows for a delay of giving electrical impulses to the ventricle so that the atrium can have its atrial kick. So the gatekeeper, the AV node, which we'll see problems with. Okay, so again, I hope you can appreciate what I'm trying to do here, even though, again, I'm out of a little sequence here, that if you can remember some of this, Great, because when we see the disturbance on a piece of paper, we're looking at the electrical, but you must be thinking the myocardium as well, and even the coronary perfusion, what's going on or what's not going on. They're all connected.